Hi there, welcome to the second part of the Unreal Engine tutorial on how to create this video. In this part of this tutorial we will learn how to set up the camera and then how to set up the sequencer in order to create this small movie. Have fun! Okay, at first let's take a look what we want to achieve. First, we want to achieve some glowing and we want to achieve lens flares. Furthermore, we want that things in the foreground and background are somehow blurry. This means we want to achieve a shallow depth of field. All these aspects we can achieve by changing some attributes of our camera. And the second thing that we want to achieve is the movement of the camera. And the movement starts uh, hovering around, then it flies to our swarm, approaches it, flies through it, and then flies backwards facing the swarm. And this we achieve with the sequencer. Okay, let's start. You might have noticed that the scene looks a little bit different than in the first part of this tutorial. Skip to the last chapter of this video to see what I changed between part 1 and part 2. Let's start with the camera. You can find the camera here and then go to cinematic and then here take the sign camera actor. Just drag and drop it into the scene. And now you see a new window popping up and in this window we see what the camera sees. So if I move it or if I rotate the camera you see how the view also changes. We can expand this view by flying the camera actor. We fly the camera actor by clicking right click on the camera actor and then here to pilot sign camera actor. And now we exactly see what the camera sees, which is indicated by this prompt here. Let's rearrange the view and set up our three settings. At first we wanted to have a star-like effect around the directional light. To activate the star effect, we go here to the sign camera actor and then we scroll down at lens, we expand bloom and then we activate method and intensity. And now you see immediately we now have a glowing disc here and already some kind of lens flares. However, at the moment we don't see a star-like shape. So we achieve a star-like shape by going here to method and select instead of standard, we select convolution. And now we have a very nice star-like shape. We can increase or decrease the effect by changing the value of intensity. If I increase, you see a very strong star and strong lens flares. If I decrease it, both of them get weaker. So Convolution Bloom not even creates a star-like effect, but also creates a lens flare effect. The strength of this lens flare effect we can adjust at another place independently of the star effect. So first let's set the star effect size in the way that we like it. Let's select this, it's like a 0.2, great. And now when we take a look, for my taste the lens flare effect is too strong. So now let's decrease its strength. We can decrease its strength by going here to Lens Flares. Click here on Intensity. And now let's decrease the intensity and you see we can easily influence it. Let's set it to a quite low value, maybe 0.05. Okay, if you don't like it, you can also change other things here. Just play around until you like the way it looks. Okay. We already achieved now the star shape and the lens flares. And now to the last part of the camera, let's set up a nice depth of field effect. To easily show you how different options affect the depth of field effect, I created a small hallway. Okay, you already see that the foreground elements are out of focus and the background is in focus. We can easily change where the current focus is by going to the camera again and then going here to focus setting and here at manual focus distance if we change it we can change the distance of the current focus. However you see that it's quite hard to see the current focus plane and for that Unreal Engine 
provides this draw debug focus plane. If we activate it, you see a purple plane and this is exactly the plane where the current focus lies. So everything at this plane is 100% sharp. Everything in front or behind is out of focus. Okay, let's focus it roughly here. Deactivate it again. Okay, there are mainly three settings that influence the strength of the depth of field effect. The first setting is the sensor size. So it's basically the size of the virtual chip in our camera that captures the light and therefore our picture. The bigger the sensor size, the stronger the depth of field effect is. And in Unreal Engine we can easily change the sensor size by changing here at Filmback the camera type. If we change the digital film to DSLR, then the depth of field effect will be a little bit stronger. But additionally also our field of view changes. You can also manually set the sensor size here at sensor width or at sensor height. Let's just keep it in this way. The next setting that influences the strength of depth of field effect is the current focal length. You can change the current focal length here at current focal length. Usually it's 35 millimeters. If we increase it to like 120, you will see that the focal length is nothing else than the zoom level. And if we take a look here, you see that here is the focus plane. So this is very sharp and behind and in front, it's now much more blurry than before. You can also see some flickering, but this we will get rid of later in our final video. And when we decrease it, you will see at the same level where our focus plane was, now in front and behind is now much more sharp than before. So low value, high value. Let's set it to 40. The next option has the strongest effect on our depth of field. And it's called current aperture. The lower this value, the stronger the depth of field is, the higher the value, the weaker the depth of field will be. So if we decrease it, just take a look around here. If we decrease it, you see now we have a much stronger depth of field effect. And you see here on the right that we can't decrease it lower than 1.2. And what happens if we increase it? And now you see the depth of field is basically gone. And you also see the, that our upper limit is at the moment at 22. We can change those two limits by going here to lens settings and changing the min f-stop and max f-stop. I want to decrease the minimum f-stop to like 0.3. Now if we go back to the current aperture and decrease it, now you see we can go even lower down to 0.3. Let's just keep it at 0.3. Okay, now you know three settings that are important. First setting is the camera type. Second setting is the current focal length. And the third setting is the current aperture. So let's focus on our swarm. I will activate our focus plane again and just move it roughly to the center of our swarm, somewhere here. Let's go up. And now take a look what happens when I move the camera. When I move the camera, you see that the focus plane also moves. However, I would like to keep the focus always on the center of our swarm, that our swarm is always in focus, even later when we create the movie scene. To achieve it, we can track an object and the camera always keeps the focus on that object. So even if the camera moves or the object moves, the object will be always sharp. And we can track objects by going here to the focus settings here at focus method, we have to select tracking. And then here we select the actor that we want to track. In our case, we want to track the particles. Just select them. And now when I move, you see that the focus plane just stays in the middle of our swarm, which is exactly what I wanted. Great. Let's deactivate the plane, get rid of this hallway. And now let's create the movie scene. To create the movie scene, we need a sequencer. And the sequencer we get by adding a level sequence. For that, we go here and then add level sequence. We just give it a name, like movie, click on save. And now the sequencer automatically opened. 
First, I show you what you see. Here you see the timeline. Our movie will start at the point 0000, 000, 000 and the movie will go at the moment till 150. These are the frames. So frame 30 means at the current frame rate of 30 FPS. Frame 30 means this is one second. Two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. So at the moment our movie is five seconds long. I would like to create a movie that is like 30 seconds long. We can change the length either by changing this red bracket here or we go here to the options and at end we just enter 900. So here we will create our movie. In our movie we just want to change the camera position and the camera view. In order to control the camera we have to take the camera and drag and drop it into the sequencer. Here we see what the movie at the moment will look like roughly. And here you see the aperture, focal length, focal distance and the transform. Keep in mind that we still are looking through the camera at the moment. If I move the view, I actually move the camera. Okay, so in order to control the camera now, we have to select time points in our timeline and then set the position and the view of the camera. And we set them by just clicking at the small plus at transform. So when I click here, you see that a new dot appeared. And this means the current position of the camera and the current view of the camera just got stored at time 0002. And now I want that the camera moves from here to the right within five seconds. And I first move to five seconds. This is 150 frames. And then I move the camera to the place I want it to be then. Here. And then I click here again on the plus. And now when I move it, you see something strange happens. You see that the camera seems to turn one time around. And here we see a bug. I still don't know why this bug happens. And I still don't know how to easily fix it. We can fix it by expanding the transform and also expand the rotation. You see three values, roll, just controls the roll of the camera. You see when I change this value to like 15, everything gets steep. Pitch basically controls the view up and down. If I change it, you see up and down. And the yaw is the value that we want. If I change it, you see that's the horizontal orientation of our camera. Okay. If we click on a keyframe, at the beginning it's at minus 164 and then it's suddenly at plus 164. So let's just change this to a positive value. Okay, that's about right. And now if we move the camera, now everything looks perfect. Okay, so we started with the right movement. And now remember the video. In the video, we went around the swarm, dived through it, and then came back out and took a look back at it. Let's recreate it. We first started with a move to the right, which is quite nice. And now let's just go here to like 300 and move our camera to the position that we want. Let's first go here. Click on the plus at transform. Five seconds later, let's go totally to the center. Five seconds later, go through it, turn back. And another five seconds. Notice that you see here the path of our camera. So this spline here represents the path of our camera. Let's take a look at the whole movie. We start here, go to the right, go through it. So it seems that the camera turns one time around. With this we have to fix and the rest looks okay-ish. Okay, let's fix the turning. Let's just immediately turn after we passed here this key point. Let's take a look here at the yaw. It's 114 and then it's roughly minus 150. 
So let's just go here at the center after we passed it roughly here. Let's just immediately turn around to minus 160 or somewhere near there. Notice the newly created keyframe. Let's take a look. We can just play the video by going here on this play button or just by pressing the space bar. So for me, it's a little bit too slow between around here. We can increase the tempo by just marking every keyframe afterwards. And then we just can drag and drop it. And by decreasing this empty space, we increase the speed of our movement. So let's take a look. So now we are faster. Perfect. Here we get slower again. I think it's a little bit too slow for my taste. Just decrease. That's fine for me. I think I would like it more if the camera looks more to the center of the swarm. So let's go here to this keyframe. Let's just change the look of the camera to here. That's fine. Let's decrease the duration of the movie to like here. Okay, that's it. A few more tips. You can copy paste keyframes. So you can mark them and via right click you can duplicate them or copy cut. Or you can also just duplicate them by selecting them, holding down the Alt key and then drag and drop it. And then you see the keyframe just got copy pasted. And you might want to copy paste keyframes in order to hold the camera still between movements. So for example, if I just copy paste these, Alt, Move and let the movie run, you see it moves, it stops and then it continues. So if you want to hold the camera fix on one position, then this is the way to go. Just delete them again. I want to have a continuous motion. That's fine for me. Okay, now I showed you how to set up the camera. I showed you how to create this star-like effect, how to create a subtle lens flare effect, and I showed you how to crank up the depth of field effect. So for example, like this, everything is now blurry at the front. I showed you how to keep focus on one object. I selected the swarm. Then I showed you how to create the sequencer. So for that, we created a level sequence, created the sequencer. We moved the camera into the sequencer and created keyframes by clicking on the plus in order to set positions of the camera at certain points in time. In the next part of this tutorial, I will show you how to create an image sequence with movie render queue and then how to convert those images into a movie file with FFmpeg. If you like this video and want to support me, I would be happy if you would subscribe to the channel and leave a like and comment. If you have any questions, just ask them down in the comment section. Okay, have fun. See you next time. Bye bye. Okay, now I will quickly show you what I changed. I changed many things like two or three weeks ago, so I don't remember everything. So just compare the settings with your settings to find out the changes. Okay, first directional light. Here are the light settings. And as far as I remember, I deactivated the distance field shadows because we don't need them for the scene and they use a little bit of additional processing power. That's about it. The exponential height fog. As far as I know, I changed a few settings in this height fog component. Just take a look. Here is the volumetric fog and that's about it. The floating particles, you might already see that they are all moving slowly in one direction. This effect I achieved with a wind force. I will show you how it looks now. So this is the emitter and you see here first, maybe I changed the spawn rate just compare it and the second you see here wind force so it just added the wind force by clicking here on the plus and searching for wind force i used those settings wind force just basically applies a constant velocity to all particles that's about it and additionally i changed the scale of this floating particles 
I decreased the Z dimension because they took too much space into the Z direction. Moreover, I moved the floating particles a little bit higher here. And that's about it. Okay, now let's take a look at the particles. Here is again the emitter. As far as I know, I increased the spawn rate just to make it more dense. Additionally, I changed the initialized particle setting. Here I changed the mesh scale. I just made those cubes a little bit longer and thinner. Moreover, just compare it with your settings. Maybe I changed here the coral noise settings and maybe I changed the drag settings. The rest should be unchanged. And here is the point light. Here are the settings. If I changed something, then it should be only here. Okay, and you see, I added a sky atmosphere in order to see our directional light. You might have already noticed in the first part of the tutorial, I was already not really sure if I want to show the directional light or not. I reconsidered and now added an atmosphere. I will show you how the scene looks without an atmosphere and with an atmosphere. I just click here on the eye and you see not much changes, only we get a little bit more haze here and we finally see the directional light. I show you what I changed. First, you find the atmosphere here in visual effects, here the sky atmosphere. Then I changed the Rayleigh scattering scale. Here is the original value. And if I decrease it, then I get the original colors back. Moreover, I decrease the Mi scattering scale. If I increase it to the original value, you see that we get more haze that I want to have not so much. So 0005. Okay. Additionally, I changed the atmosphere absorption. The original color was green, but this setting changes the colors a tiny bit. You see it gets more blue, but I want to have my original color. So here we just select black. And now when we compare it, you see the colors don't change. So that's about it. I hope that your scene works as intended. If you have questions, then just ask them in the comments. I usually react quite quickly. And if you want to support me, then I would be happy if you would like the video. Click on subscribe and maybe leave a comment. Everything helps the algorithm and me, of course. Have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye.